hyoid bones were intact. And that's that U-shaped little yeah, bone, that's right? that's normally that, fractured when there's... Norm, so, so usually when someone when someone is strangled or choked really hard, that fractures. And if you usually try and hang yourself, a lot of times it no. doesn't. So they say if, if it's broken, it's murder. If it's not, it's suicide. Usually, yes. As, as like a generic term, that's kind of what they... His hyoid bone was fractured. His, he was yeah, broken. He was broken into a billion pieces. By, by, so, by, he, so by Zell standards, murder. <laughs> he heard it here first. He was murdered. It was murdered. It was murdered. All right. Yeah. So that's so that that leads them. It's suspicious. Both they're they're strangled, but their bones are that bone is not broken. So the Toronto Police Service told the media, told the news, the old good old CBC, CTV, and Global. That there's no signs of any force entry, so they did not include a search for suspects right well, away because no signs of for, force entry. Just, and, which I get, but for me, when I read that, I was like, does every, especially in Canada, especially if you're in a nice neighborhood, do you lock all your doors all the time, all the time? Not to mention, I like, think. Listen, okay, I understand that too. You don't necessarily have to lock all your doors all the time. There's literally a fucking key to your house hanging on the front door that a lot yeah. of people have a code to. Yeah, like one of those it's little lock, lock box. boxes for... Right? Well, like, and, yeah. and, you know, there was a lot of people coming and going because they were selling their house. They were doing. They were in the midst of some renos, uh, right? We're going to get into it further down the road, but there, you know, a room was just painted. A window may or may not have been left open for that room to dry. It's definitely uh, left open. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Yeah. So it's the, right. The Tor the interesting thing is though the Toronto Police, like you know, they're not really looking at um, they're not really looking at suspects. They're they're actually looking at the Shermans for this. This is a like a domestic dispute gone bad. They rule it a potential murder they suicide. They leak that to the press. They leak that to the press. This is a potential murder. Su the leading. Our leading theory right now is that this is a domestic dispute that, uh, you know, turns into a, um, a murder suicide. And they actually start questioning Barry's associates and family, not about like, did he have any enemies? Did, you know, was there anyone that was upset with him? They start asking, did he potentially have any illnesses that he may have been terminal and he was going to kill himself <laughs> for? And killed his wife, right? took her with him? Like, what the fuck? Boy. Well, and another reason, another re reason they thought that is because, well, she had that face trauma, so they kind of just deduce like, oh, he, 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 so he didn't, so he struck his wife, maybe she fell, or whatever he, whatever it is, that's what they came up with that right away, like yeah, murder, like that's their initial thought, and everyone knows, everyone's seen the show, listened to all the true crime podcasts, the first forty eight, yeah, you no, know, if there's a potential suspect, and. 40, you got 48 hours to, and what, that, what happens after 48? The Goes chances cold. go down like drastic, yeah. drastically, drastically I down. just want to say that the Toronto police chased the murder-suicide theory as their leading theory without go looking at other theories for five to seven weeks. Five yeah. to seven weeks they looked at this. Didn't well, even like, give a fathom to another anything else. They didn't fingerprint any of the fucking people who frequent the house or any of the close, like, family, friends, relatives, anything like that. Um, they didn't do any interviews with friends, family, anything like that. They didn't check for fucking security cameras at his business where they were both seen together prior to the fucking – to the death. Dude. And they didn't check the fucking – the neighbor said, hey, I have some sp suspicious shit on a fucking camera. And we'll I'll get into that a little bit later about the the significant information from that. And said, "Hey, look, I have this, and it's going to be, be deleted in seven days. You guys need to look at it." And they didn't look at anything for over a month. And they didn't. I mean, this is a house undergoing renovations to be sold, so painting and touch ups and little finishes. As far as I know, no, none of the workers were contacted right away. Nothing. Like it was just they, like they, they literally tunnel vision, and were like, mm, "Hey, no force breaking, nothing was stolen." This case solved good itself. Here. Another one in the books, boys. You've done it again, Magoo. But listen, boys, <laughs> I will say one thing, and I think this might be a contributing factor, oddly enough, because when I was looking into this, right around the exact same time, they had actually just busted Bruce MacArthur. And do you guys remember who Bruce MacArthur was? Yeah, he was the, the military that guy that killed those 17 people. 
Yeah, he, like, one of oh, Canada's shit. most prolific serial killers. Oh, the one in Nova, Co- no, it's Nova in Scotia. Yeah, Toronto area. It's in Toronto. them in I, planners. Yeah, so basically this Bruce MacArthur, oh, okay. like by all means, this guy's in his 60s or whatever, right? So kind of unassuming. Ex-military guy. Um, he was predatory towards the gay community, went after a lot of like closeted gay men, would meet them online and murder them and buried them in some poor lady's fucking yard. And her, yeah. and her planters. He was doing like landscaping work at this lady's house. Oh, that's yeah, right. right. And this is oh, this shit. is literally like one. This is he's he might be one of Canada's biggest serial killers. I'm pretty sure. If I, I'd yeah. have to look into it, but picked in they had I think number one. They had just busted him, right? So that was going on at the exact same time. So I'm wondering if maybe that was drawing a lot of their attention. And so unfortunately, too many resources. Barry and Honey kind of you know dropped a little bit further down the priority. List, but, which is no, there's no excuse for that. None. No, no. But so with this, like you know, this, you know, you know, basically leaking that the Shermans had it was a murder suicide by Barry. Potentially, that's what they're looking to. What did the family think? They went fucking nuts. They went nuts. As you would, you would. I mean, your loved ones are dead. You would, you're trying to do anything you can to try and solve the case, to try and get to the bottom of it. And you're not happy with the answers that the police are giving you. Like, there's no way there's murder suicide. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, You know what? And it's probably perfectly normal to be in denial in these situations. But with this this case, like, it's exceptionally ridiculous to think that this was a murder suicide. 100%. So, in response, the friends and family noted that, I mean, this is a mansion. So, it has nine entrances and Barry and Honey. I mean, they're knowing they're known for helping in the community. They, the families told the police they would probably let anyone in at any time of day if they needed help. Like they would even think oh, about yeah. it. The girls, so girl a, scouts are still there, buddy. They came in to yeah. deliver cookies right? fucking two years ago. They moved in. Oh yeah, the chocolate mints. Complete strangers, anything. They would try and help anyone out. I mean, they would probably they had so much money they would probably like, buy them groceries, get them cat. Like they would do anything to help people. It's like they've been it's been documented for their whole life. There's some shadier stuff we'll get to in the future, but they do, they have helped a lot of people, right? They definitely have. So the family gets a little fucking, a little up on the police well, about they're, it. They're, they start uh, coming they, out consistently saying like, hey, listen, there's not a fucking chance, right? There's our, you know, this is, they wouldn't do this. This is, this wouldn't happen. They wouldn't do this. You guys got to look at another avenue. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense for our parents. This doesn't make sense for uncle, whatever, whoever the, basically the family consensus was, was this is a load of shit. There's no goddamn way that hunt like Barry would have killed honey, let alone kill himself after. Right. And then they even contact Brian, What's his name? Brian Greenspan. He's like one of the most famous Canadian like, lawyers. Was it defense Canadian lawyers of all time? A Canadian lawyer, d- respected and prominent defense lawyers, like in history of like of and, Canada. Like he's he's the top and dog. This is, and it's an interesting Please. one because they're getting a defense lawyer to try to help point this, you know, investigation in the direction of having someone convicted. Absolutely. Like they basically got the Canadian Perry Mason. Yeah, the Matlock, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they got they got him, but they also got him to help them hire a private investigator. Because they're like, the, if the police don't have the time or they're not looking to help us with this case, we're going to do it. We have the money. Yeah. We can do it on yeah, our own. Absolutely, resources. they have the money. Right? So they hired David, was it, is it Chazon? Uh, Chazon? Chazon? Yeah. Chazon. He's a retired forensic pathologist for Ontario. He's like a government, he's an ex, like, He's one of the best of this field as well, and he he conducted a second. He's the best of the best of the best, hundred percent. He he conducted a second autopsy and established that the couple indeed had been murdered. Yeah, so like we start with (laughs) the uh, high high bones were still intact. He ended up finding out that there was skin missing from both Barry and Honey's wrists, which like they've been bound. bound. They were bound, most likely with zip ties, and, and it was removed. Right. And one of the most substantial things that he found is that the two belts, the two men's leather belts that they were hung from were not used to strangle them. It was a different device. It was different. Of some, they were some strangled kind. in some other way. The two belts were not used to strangle them. And you well, know what the fucking the, the, you know the, the width of the industry or the width of the injury didn't match like the size of the belt or something. And that's a good question. That's just all I know is that they. I, I'm imagine. I'm imagining that's he's like, 
This is a t fucking one inch strangulation and that's a three inch belt. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you wanna watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.